Across Britain, there's a hidden network of canals, over 2,000 miles long. Many of them cut through the most spectacular scenery in the country. In this series, I've chosen six of my favourites, from the Lancashire coast to the southwest of England. Oops. Oh dear, it's in. We've lost the hat. I'll be enjoying their stories, discovering why and how they were built. This is Britain at its absolute best. And celebrating their remarkable revival. I'm heading down the Staffordshire and Worcestershire Canal. It's a little-known treat for canal lovers, which weaves its way through some delightful scenery. I'm starting in Wolverhampton in the Midlands and travelling to Stourport, where the canal joins the River Severn. Along the way, I'll be blowing glass to great effect. That's perfection. Exploring a secret underground bunker. What a strange place it is. I'll be captivated by some superb engineering. And I'll marvel at the genius who built it. Isn't it beautiful? Not quite what you'd expect from a suburb of Wolverhampton. But this is the Staffordshire and Worcestershire Canal, one of the hidden gems of the West Midlands. A famously successful canal in its working past, it now provides one of the best canal trips in Britain. Helping me out on this trip is Michel Rowe. It's great, isn't it? Yes, it's lovely. You wouldn't believe that you're in a town. No. We've got the lovely trees in the banks. Yeah, and most people have no idea it's here, do they? You go across the bridge and you think, oh, there's a canal down there. So how long have you been involved in boats? 41 years. 41 years? Yes. <laughs> Since you were tiny. Yes. yes. This is one of the earliest canals, begun in 1766. Canals in Britain took time to be established, and this one is the work of a great pioneer, James Brindley. Brindley didn't do well at school, but his natural imagination was fired by the thought that canals, like those in Holland, could transform Britain. This country has been late to find out the benefits of inland navigation. In Holland, they have intersected their country with artificial canals. Out of a small tract of marshland, they have raised a populous and powerful state, reverenced and courted by all the world. This canal was part of Brindley's plan to create the Grand Cross, connecting Britain's main rivers by canal. This one linked the potteries to the River Severn. This was a very important canal, wasn't it? Very important. What were the kind of things that would be carried on these boats? A lot of sand, actually. Coal, lime, things like carpets, because they were bulky, and glass as well. So in terms of exports, they're coming down here... Yes. ..on their way to the sea. Yes, a smooth journey down. Yeah. Soon we come to the first lock Brindley ever built. After you. Thank you. <laughs> His design is attractive. A circular weir takes surplus water from the top and sends it down to the bottom. So when you've got too much water in the canal, yep. it just comes straight up. It off. comes straight through, goes round, and it comes down into the centre. You also feel as if you're going to go into the centre of the earth there, don't you? <laughs> Once, if you fall in, that's, that's it. That's it, you're gone. How are you? Rather wet, but you're looking good. Yeah, thank you very much. No. Hello, how are you getting on? Very well, Mr. Sergeant, thank you. <laughs> are you enjoying your holiday? It's not really a holiday, because we're retired, but uh, just three months, four months over summer, we cruise. Oh, really? We take it easy now. Yeah. We didn't use to. Are you all right down there, Val? <laughs> this is where you might lose her. Well, <laughs> this could you know, be, the, we, we, could we, be a we, tricky we, moment. We just make sure she doesn't get taken by that current. And does your wife enjoy being in on as much as you do? Yeah, well, yeah, I think so. Does she? Not quite, but <laughs> close to. Close. Yeah. <laughs> when it's wet, she hates it. Does course. she? Yeah. We've been married 50-odd years, so we, we do know each other fairly well. <laughs> <laughs> I just leave her below and I just trundle along. Hello. Hello. 
can we have a chat? Of course you can have a chat. Right, now I've been chatting to your husband, Chris. I know. He's given me his version. He's given me <laughs> his version. <laughs> well, I don't know about his version, what he's been saying. Now, what he did say was you're not very keen on the rain. No. I have to admit, I get very grumpy when, it's, when I'm very wet. And um, what, what does Chris then say you've got to do? Uh, stay below. Yes. But do yeah. you think of him as the captain, though? No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> a little further on, we come to Bratch Lock. Three locks in a row. Mark Overton is the overworked lock keeper. Hello, how are you? Uh, not very well, thank you, and you? Have you had a busy day? It's been very busy today. I've been piling through since about 8 o'clock this morning, and uh, I literally got my breakfast around about quarter to three this afternoon, so... And if you weren't here, what might happen? Well, it could be potential chaos, to be quite honest with you, because you have a run of three locks close together with no passing points and all the water is to the side. When we get big queues of boats, we will work three locks up and three locks down, and it's just keeping an eye on the paddles. They're going in the right sequence at the right time. Thanks very much for helping us. No problem, John. Thank you. All cargoes were taxed, and the canal made a lot of money. The tolls were paid after each boat was weighed before it was allowed through. Right, Michelle, I've borrowed this uh, gauge from the toll house. It works out what the draft is, and this is to work out what the tax is. The spit goes on to the gunnel. Yes. 28. Right, so if I get on, whoops. Yep. 26 and a half inches. Right, so someone has got... Blast. 14 stone adds an extra one and a half inches. And I will be charged for how many miles we're going. Yeah. Cliff Sherwood has kept some of the old toll records. This is a gauging book for the old commercial boats that used to trade on the canals. When we were checking the gauge on our boat, it was about 28 inches to start with. So if you look down here and you look across, 11 tons. Yeah. Right, so that, of course, includes the whole weight of the boat. What else have we got? What other book have we got? This is just a book of the various cargoes and the destinations which the boat will be travelling in. It is a toll receipt. Um, so this shows the tax has been paid. So that's sand. Yep. We then turn this over. That's grain. Yep. You see that? And then we take sugar. Yes. So that's 30 tonnes of sugar. Yep. Six shillings, so that's 30, 30 pence. I know that. Mm -hmm. I think you know that too, <laughs> don't you? I know. The canal trade grew, the money flowed in, and small towns sprung up. Stourbridge is one of them, my next stop. This is home to Tudor Crystal, who still manufacture top quality glass. The canal boats brought in the raw materials and took out the finished glassware. Glass making has been here for over 200 years. Colin John keeps the tradition going. I love the old brickwork. Oh, yes. Yeah. Could do with a bit of pointing up. <laughs> <laughs> That's the date, isn't it? Yeah, it's 1788. What a terrific building. Yes, it is a nice building. What would have been going on down here? Now, this would be the heart of the furnace. Right. In the olden days, they used to deliver the coke in for the furnaces from the canals through the tunnels. And then you've got sand coming in too, yeah. haven't you? Yes, and that would be bought in the same way. From the canal? From the canal. Yeah. These are the furnaces we use now. I'm just going to get a blowing iron, making sure it's hot. Right. Lay it into the furnace. And turn. It's incredibly hard, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it is. I'll shape it with a block to cool it down a little bit. Then I'll just shape it on the, what we call a marva to make it round. And I'll just put a little blow in it. And if you would, John, you right. stand over there. Okay. And hold and blow it. Hold them blow. A blow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's wonderful. That really isn't that wonderful. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can't improve on that. That's perfection, That's seems well, to me. Well, it is, yeah. Just a little bit of water. Oh, yeah. Gently tap it. All oh, right. There you go. One whiskey tumbler. Then it's over to Ian Stanley, who does the cutting. Hello, John. You've got to have very steady hands, haven't you? Yeah, that's all right. It's no good nipping down the pub. <laughs> do you want to have a go? Well, all right, yeah. Do you think I'll be any good at it? We'll soon find out. <laughs> I suppose so. <laughs> a circular diamond cutter. One slight slip doesn't bear thinking about. What do you think? <laughs> Where's mine? Oh, that's not very good, is it? That's from there. OK. How long did it take you to learn this? We had to do a five-year apprenticeship. Five years? Yeah. I got about five minutes. But I like the result. At least it's very handmade, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> whose hand is this? Some idiot. <laughs> so I'm an engraver now. That's good. <laughs> I'm not sure I have the patience for glass cutting. A simple boatman like me. Whoops, oh dear. There's something about a Brindley lock. They're special, they're efficient, and after all these years, work as well as the day they were first opened. Right. And off we go. This stretch south of Stourbridge is the prettiest. It's beautifully preserved and treated with pride. How are you? Are you? Are you on holiday or are you living? Oh, how long have you done that? Four years now. Really? Is it going well? Yeah, brilliant. Hello. Gently. So I put some of Touch these in. Touch the reverse. Touch the reverse. Off the throttle. You'll ground her. That could be a problem. Is there a problem here? You're aground. Oh, are we? <laughs> right. That's a bit embarrassing. Well, it's only because I'm tired. We'll sort it all out in the morning. OK, then. You're um, off. Yes, I will see you tomorrow. Right, you're off to see your children? Yes, back to my children, see what they've been up to. OK, okay right, have see a you nice tomorrow. evening. Yep, have a nice evening. OK. What I need is a really good night's sleep. The perfect end to the perfect day. I've always had the highest respect for Canada, but their geese, last night, I don't know what they were up to. Must have had all their mates round or something. Just don't worry about me. Still, I've got all my cooking skills to fall back on. Hello. Nice day, isn't it? Gonna be. Absolutely lovely. Yeah. Morning. Oh, hello. How <laughs> coming, are you? Just coming. I'm just over 10 miles from Starport on the Staffordshire and Worcestershire Canal. And what a nice surprise. It has all sorts of attractive features and remains much the same as when it was first built. It was never sold off or leased to a railway. It stayed independent right up to nationalisation in 1948. Here at the village of Kinver, you can catch a fascinating glimpse of how the canal was built. After you. Yeah, thank you. For thousands of years, 
people in this area have cut into the sandstone to make their homes. This is the cave of the Navies who built the canal dug out as a shelter. And maybe spend the night here. Yep, yeah. have a fire in the centre. Yeah. Keep warm. And of course, this sandstone that we can see here, this was often used in parts of the canal buildings and the bits of the canal works. They needed to have this yes. stone. It's amazing, isn't it? Sandstone is easy to work. There are many caves around here, and I've been invited to one called Drakelow Tunnels. Hello. What is this place? Well, this is one of the most important um, secret government establishments in the country at one time. Right. Would you like to come and have a look? Yes, thank you. Sid Robinson's family farmed the land above the tunnels, and now he's taken on the task of restoring them. These tunnels are made from... They're cutting through the local sandstone, aren't they? Oh, yes, yes, because it's, it's very easy to, uh, to carve, you know, it's very soft. These were actually built in 1941, at the start yeah. of the Second World War. And that's what, did, what were they for? Uh, during the war, this was uh, an, an underground factory, and they used to make parts for the Spitfire engines, oh, for example. Right. So when the war was over, the factory went. That's correct. Um, and then, once the Cold War started, this was a perfect place for a secret establishment. Oh, yes, it was totally top secret, yes. So this would have been one of the, well, one of the bunkers, really, and the command centres. Um, to try and defend the country against a nuclear attack. Absolutely, yes. I mean, we're actually in the hub of the uh, bunker now. And this is the, the operating theatre and the sick bays here on the, on the right, where they would have been dealt with should you have needed uh, treatment. What a strange place it is. Oh, it certainly is. Creepy. Incredibly so. This is the part of the bunker where the broadcasters would have had a studio. Oh, right, so some of my old colleagues from the BBC might have had to work here in the event of a nuclear war. Very likely. Good evening. I'm afraid I've got some bad news. It's the end of the world. So it's not good night, it's goodbye. From Kinver, we're continuing south to Kidderminster. For over 200 years, carpet making has been the chief industry in the town. Brinton's carpets were the first, established in 1783. The canal was central to their success, the perfect way to transport the heavy rolls. factory has made carpets for kings, queens and presidents with just about every design, shape and size you can imagine. For Jan Peace, there's no limit to what customers might want. Hello, Jan. Oh, hello, John. Right, what goes on here? Well, we are checking the trials which are going out to various customers. So now these, where are they going? This is going to... A cruise line. What about this one? Now, this one is for senior living in, in, in America. Senior living? Yes. Nice and bright and cheerful. Well, I suppose so. I'm trying to spur them up a bit, get well, them out of the chairs. Yes. Even if you're very old and very ill, just cheer up and this will do the trick, won't you? Yes. I'm not sure I would cheer them up. <laughs> uh, if I saw that, <laughs> that could finish me off. I'd be sort of, you know. But they may think this is the best thing about this care home is the carpet. Right, yes, they might. They might, yes. they might. It's possible, isn't it? I think it's, of course it is. Yeah, it's of course it is. Do you ever <laughs> dream about carpets? No. No? No. Because no. you have enough of them during the day. Yes, and I have plain carpets at home. Do you? Yes. No patterns <laughs> no. at all? <laughs> no. Now, when you go into someone else's house and you look at their carpet, <laughs> what do you think? 
No, I don't do that in other people's houses, but yeah. I have been into hotels and think, mm, that looks like I was... Oh, have you? Yeah, yes. And is yeah. that, that must be a nice feeling there. Yes. Now I've just got to weave my way down to the end of the canal at Starport Basin. Right. All those carpets would once have made this journey. Hello. <laughs> Hello. How are you? Hello. Having a nice time. program. Yeah, great. The town was made by the canal. It didn't exist before the canal was built. Here, goods were shipped through the wharfs and onto the River Severn, making this one of the largest inland ports in the country. So we go through into the basin, yep. and then it connects up with the Severn. Yes. And that's what James Brindley wants to do, didn't he? Yes. That was the whole point of this canal. The whole point, to get all the goods from up in the Midlands, straight down, into the sea, via the rivers, and out to the world. Yeah, so, so it's a, it is a fantastic construction, isn't it? Oh, it is. And until the canal came here, Starport didn't exist. Tiny village, if anything. Yeah. So, yes, and now it's a big, bustling town. My trip on the Staffordshire and Worcestershire Canal ends here at Starport Basin. This was not only one of the first, but it's still one of the finest canals in Britain. And it also stands as the memorial to the work of a great man, James Brindley, the towering genius of 200 years ago. And what else can I do but salute him? Thanks very much, Sean. It's been terrific, thank you. Thanks, Luke. Will Nick break the news to Carla? We're back in Coronation Street next. After that, your Friday night drama continues with James Nesbitt in The Secret. That's at nine. And on Sunday at 7.30, we hear from the people who knew her best. Let's do it. A tribute to Victoria Wood. <laughs>